here are the things that you can do to make sure that you can actually play Star Citizen. So first things first, it's good to have an understanding as to what is it that Star Citizen is very demanding of. Star Citizen is mostly demanding on memory usage and CPU processing. When I say memory usage, I'm talking about the read and write speeds of RAM, also the stability of that RAM. Uh, it's also very dependent on CPUs, and as of now we don't have Vulkan implemented as the recording of this video, so it's more dependent on the clock speeds that are based on specific cores, not on the optimizations for all of them. The faster the clock speed, as of today, with Star Citizen 3.15.1, the better. In terms of the read and write speed of RAM, Star Citizen has a memory leak. If you have 16 gigs of RAM, and by 16 gigs I mean 16 gigabytes of RAM, specifically DDR4, the minimum system requirements that are posted will lead you to believe that it would be enough. Sadly, that is not the case. You will be able to open and run the game, but you will have a abysmally bad experience doing so. You'll hate the game, it'll just be buggy, beyond playability, and you're going to not like anything that you find inside of the game. So let's fix that. One of the first things that you can do is set up a page file. If you are in Windows 11, what you can do is open up the start menu, and you can search performance, and you should see an option that says adjust the appearance and performance of windows. You're going to click and open this, and you're going to see three tabs. You're going to select the second tab, advanced, and you're going to hit the change button. You're going to see a box at the top, and you're going to untick that. Here is where you're going to select your fastest drive. Note, you should have an SSD to play Star Citizen. If you do not have an SSD, do not play the game. I recommend that you hold off from playing the game, period, if you do not have a drive. If you do have an SSD, make sure to select it and make sure that you click on custom size. Here we're going to set a amount of the drive that will be used as pseudo RAM. When I say pseudo RAM, I mean that the operating system of your computer is going to look at this portion that you dictate here and it's going to say, okay, if I run out of actual physical RAM, I'm going to use this amount of your SSD or NVMe as RAM, although it might be slower, but it'll work to be able to run applications. In this case, this will be specifically for Star Citizen. If you have 16 gigs of RAM, Ensure that you put in double the amount of what your RAM is, 16 times 2, 32. So you're going to put 32,000 because 32,000 megabytes is 32 gigabytes, and you're going to hit the set button. Once you hit set, hit OK, apply OK, then restart your system. If you still have issues with the game and you have more than 16 gigs of RAM, double it. Note. People do point out that by setting a paid file, you lower the life expectancy or lifespan of your SSD. This is because when you have an SSD, the manufacturer states that it is designed to have a specific amount of reads and writes for its lifespan. Setting a page file means that whenever you run an application, there's going to be an increased amount of those reads and writes. It's very rare to see anyone have their SSDs simply die because of a page file. When you feel comfortable, set the page file. Another thing that you can do is make sure that you have the right settings for your graphics card. Unfortunately, I only have a NVIDIA graphics card. If you have an AMD graphics card, I will post in the description instructions related to your graphics card. Unfortunately, I do not personally have one, so my experience on those at the moment with the updated software of today is limited. Go into your NVIDIA control panel, which would be right clicking if you're in Windows 11, show more options in NVIDIA control panel. Once everything is loaded, hit to manage 3D settings. Under global settings, what you're going to be setting are the following. Make sure that you have power management mode, prefer maximum performance. This will ensure that your graphics card is running at the maximum performance power plan that it's supposed to be, which means it's going to use the electricity it needs. The next thing you're going to set is the shader cache size. 
Surprisingly, someone had found that the shader cache is actually a good way to improve your frames per second in Star Citizen because of the way that Star Citizen stores everything that is needed to load graphically, as well as, surprisingly, the location of your home location. Depending on your graphics card, you may want to set a different amount. If you look at the settings, it has a specific a set of increments. It goes from 128 megabytes up to 256, 512, 1 gig, 5 gig, 10 gigs, 100 gigs, and unlimited. 100 gigabytes and unlimited is not often recommended by a lot of people, but if you have a need and you have the space to allow your graphics card to use that amount of space because nothing else is working, go ahead. Although nobody really sees or reports a lot of games past 10 gigabytes. Make sure that you set it to either 10, 5, or 1, depending on your graphics card's memory. The next thing that you're going to turn on would be triple buffering. Texture filtering quality to high performance. Texture filtering negative level of detail bias. Make sure that's set to allow. Due to GPUs, make sure it's set to all. Low latency mode, make sure that's set to ultra. And make sure that vertical sync is set to fast. Once those are set, you can close out of the NVIDIA control panel. Let's move on to the next step. The next step would be to install a software called Process Lasso. That would be this software. This software takes any sort of process that's running in the background and you can make sure that the software that you select runs at the highest priority and uses the most of the CPU resource that you have in your computer. To do this, you're going to want to run Star Citizen in the background, not load it into any world, specifically just the main menu. So let's open up Star Citizen. Once you're in the main menu, Alt Tab Back, Process Lasso, and you're going to want to find the process for the game. It should be listed as StarCitizen.exe. Once you have it selected, right click, you're going to want to make sure of the following settings. CPU priority, always high. Memory priority, always normal. Induce performance mode, more. Disable idle saver, exclude from smart trim, application power profile. Make sure that the Bitsim highest performance is the power plan that is selected. I am a big fan of the high performance that comes with Windows 11 already. But after finding that there was a secret power plan in Windows 11 that actually goes beyond high performance, this power plan actually matches that and does a pretty good job of giving you a high performance setting with your CPU. Prevent sleep, set that to prevent PC and display, and we should be done here. Make sure to not close the application. Simply minimize it, leave it running in the background. We have other steps that we are able to take. The classic game booster software does an amazing job at helping us get more out of of what we already have. You may not be aware there are processes running in the background. When I say this, I am not talking about the system tray. You may find that icons in the system tray may signify applications that you have access to in the background, but in reality there may be services, there may be processes and other applications that run in a hidden setting behind the scenes that you can only see with special tools and that does not include task manager. Let's take the opportunity to open Game Boost here. Now that we have it open, we want to go to the performance tab you're going to see this little window that says optimize pc for better performance make sure you hit the scan button let this run through once it's done finish it then come back to the boost tab once you're done and we're in the boost tab come to the icon at the top right do not click on these icons these are meant for overclocking you're going to want to hit the gear wheel then come to the special tab make sure that launch game on gaming desktop is picked next move to processes here, you're going to have to take some time and patiently read through the software that is being running in the background. As you can see, there is a tab that says unnecessary for gaming, and the bars indicate how much resources off of your computer a specific process is actually taking that is not necessary for what you're trying to do, which in this case is gaming. I do not recommend that you tick the svchost.exe since this is a Windows process to host other software and services that is needed. Once you have sifted through and ticked on every single process and service and application that you know you do not need or do not want running, we can move on to the services tab. Here we're going to do the same thing. Make sure to read the description of each item. Even if you accidentally tick on something that Windows ended up actually needing and it ends up making something look a little wonky or scares you into thinking you broke your PC, a simple restart should fix that. Once we're done, we can exit out of this and we can click on boost. Once we're done here, you can minimize this, leave it running in the background, 
Process Lasso and Game Booster will be giving you some service and performance boost regardless of them running in the background. It is better to have them both on instead of them off and other things running. Another piece of software that we can use is Wise Memory Optimizer. It is a simple memory cleaning software that uses an algorithm to be able to clean out services and RAM usage that is not being needed at the moment for a dedicated application in the foreground. In layman's terms, this cleans your RAM while you're doing stuff. All you have to do is install it once it's running hit optimize wait a moment when it's done then you can click out of it and it'll be running in the background just fine another thing you can do is overclocking overclocking is the process of taking a component from your pc configuring it in a different way that goes beyond the limits of the manufacturer and you can get better performance out of it depending on what caliber or quality the silicon is and depending on well, what component you have, as well as the electricity that you have given by the power supply. If you have a power supply that has a lot of headroom, let's say you have a 1000 watt power supply, you have more than enough electricity to provide a very stable overclock to whatever components you have without worrying for any sort of electricity issue. If you have a 400 watt power supply, I do not recommend you overclock, period. If you have a 600 watt, you have a 700 watt, do not. I only recommend overclocking for 750 and up. And 750 is a dangerous area, in my opinion, depending on your components. Some of these components take a lot of electricity. All you have to do is do a quick Google search, make sure that the TDP or total drawn power is within the ranges and limits of what your power supply is able to provide. If you do not know how much electricity your power supply provides, do not consider overclocking. Take the time to inquire on the manufacturer you bought it from, or if you have the ability, take the computer, open it, take it apart, pull out the power supply, and look for a sticker around it. It will have the information needed and you will be able to tell how much electricity this power supply is able to supply to your system. And you'll be able to see whether it's rated for bronze, silver, and gold. These tiers refer to how efficiently your power supply is in terms of providing that electricity at a constant rate as well as their reliability. Something else that people are not aware of checking would be the clock speeds that they already have on their processors and components. What I mean by this is that there is a very slim possibility that you actually might be running components under their rated performance. What do I mean by this? Well, if I pull up CPU-Z, which is a tool to see the specific factors of different components, you're going to see that I'm going to have specific numbers per component. I have an i7-9700K, it's currently running at 95 watts, uh, rated by the sensor. It's currently at 4.9 gigahertz, which is 4,900 megahertz, and all the cores are set to the multiplier of 4.9 gigahertz. My CPU is not rated to run at 4.9. I believe it's rated to run at 3.2. I've overclocked my CPU. If you have a component that is not running at the rated speed or clock speeds that the manufacturer set on the box or on the label, you should look up information on forums, a YouTube video, or anything of the sort to find why that is and how to change it. Usually this includes going into your BIOS, simply changing the number and making sure that it has the right voltage. Note, I'm not responsible for anything that happens to your computer if you mess this up. I'm also not responsible if your computer simply behaves weirdly at the beginning and it scares you into you thinking that you messed it up when you actually haven't. Knowing this, do all of these at your own risk. Once you have all of that set, the next steps that we can take into making Star Citizen run better would be going into the game and changing some settings in the graphical menu. Once we're back in Star Citizen, go to Options, Graphics, scroll all the way down, make sure that Motion Blur is off, V-Sync off, Sharpening all the way off, Chromatic Aberration all the way to the left, and no film grain. No matter what equipment you have, for some reason, these settings cause the game to gain a lot of instability and issues. I've been able to run the game with motion blur, only lasting up to 10 minutes. A lot of people that I've spoken to have also had the same issue. I would also like to say, all the information that I have is because of experience and things that I've read within Spectrum and also seeing forums of different components outside of Star Citizen while trying to troubleshoot issues and bugs with people in the persistent testing universe of the game. When all of this is said and done, 
make your way into the persistent universe see what the difference is in terms of your performance have fun be patient with the game if it still isn't being stable or if you're still having major bugs remember that we run on shards now shards being a node for which you have a connection copy of the server for the game just because you have an issue connecting to the server does not mean that everybody else does so simply come out of the server hop into another one and see how that fares for you if you have network issues, you may have to troubleshoot that, which is a whole different beast to tackle. Some people need to set up port forwardings for the game. Some people need to set uh, VPNs so that they can run and connect appropriately. I will leave links to the articles related to the network issues and other related crashes in the description below. Have fun, and I'll see you in the verse.